Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel where I am going to show you my latest game against the stalemate wizard himself, the man, international master Eric Rosen, legendary streamer, YouTuber and chess meme creator, oh no my queen and the likes, let's see what happened. So, in the opening uh, I decided to do something different instead of entering uh, the Stafford Gambit for the 75th time and the very quiet but exciting, if that's not uh, a contradiction, um, Giacomo Piano occurred where um, I managed to seize the initiative by playing here bishop b5 which is a bit meh but it's playing to be trying to play for d4, bishop d7, g4, knight h7, castles and after knight d4, after a couple of trades we got into this position where the main event, well, the most important thing as far as the outcome of the game concerned happened. I don't know if it was a mouse slip or not, but Eric landed, ended up playing c5 here, which um, obviously meant that my d5 knight remained on a beautiful outpost. Instead, c6 was desired, which indeed does leave the pawn on d4 temporarily unguarded. But because of a2 is also hanging, I can't really get to adventurous capturing and upon defending the pawn, he can also defend his. And now, although d5 is exposed, I can't really put stuff in there. After c5, it was a fairly easy cruising for me in the next X amount of moves. I chucked my other knight onto f5. And as a matter of fact, these two knights have created and wrecked, in a, uh, wrecked havoc in the black defense and created enough opportunities for me to actually score a nice tactic here. So if you want to figure it out, you can pause the video. It's rather simple. So I played here um, knight takes g7, which can't be captured because of the other knight fork decides the game. And for all intents and purposes, from here on out, it should be a fairly straightforward uh, story. I gradually increased uh, my advantage and here Eric fell into another fork, which is already of decisive nature because the queen can't even retake due to the third fork on d6. So now I'm just totally winning. I'm up a rook. And uh, to be quite honest, hereabouts I already was getting a little bit uh, edgy about like, come on, man, like, why are you still playing this? Anyway, so it goes on and on and on and on and on. I'm getting more and more material. I'm winning even the knight now on f1, uh, on h3. Note how this move traps the knight in, and then I'm going to win it next move. So I'm like, dude, really? What's what's going on? And then we get to this position where I'm like, okay. Let me get a new queen. And at this very moment, I'm doing the following. I went promote, the pieces popped up as to what I want. And then I went like, hold the phone, brother. Hang on a Ticarino. And then I realized what a genius the Wizard of Starmates is. Eric Rosen, the boss. Jeez Louise, look at this. If I promote to queen, he plays rook a1 check, forcing me to take. And then, because the queen cuts off the back rank squares, it's a stalemate. Wowzers, dude. And then worse still, uh, when I actually did this, when you are in a game, you can't cancel this, or I don't know how to. I press escape, nothing happened. I clicked on a neutral spot, nothing happened. I'm like, Whoa, what to do now? And I didn't want to under-promote tonight, or Bishop, it felt... Um, Silly, because by now I figured out that, excuse me, if I play check first, then after promotion, it's a um, totally easy win. So eventually I ended up actually refreshing the page, which allowed me to cancel the promotion. And I played knight d5. Turns out there is touch piece even in online chess. Um, and I ended up playing knight d5 check. And now, of course, uh, after promoting to queen, um, there is uh, no talking about... Um, um, any stalemate scenarios because the king can do go to d7 and the, the f pawn is uh, also perfectly mobile so we are totally a-okay so um, yeah I managed to cancel that I went queen and then I ended up uh, winning the game after a couple of moves but boy like in hindsight I mean, at this point, I was somewhat irritated. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, come on, man, what's going on? And I was totally unsuspecting. And then here comes the genius himself who does this. He starts fixing all the pawns. 
right? So it's a very cautious effort. It wasn't a fluke. What he did here was actually nothing short of the work of a genius swindler. Because, not swindler, swindler. Uh, because what he's doing here is that he's fixing the pawns. I feel like this one, for example, this reaction from me, I'm pretty certain made him rather happy. Because if I just leave it on, then obviously the pawns are more mobile. So now he's immobilizing his last pawn while sacking another one that could technically make a move. And after trade, trade, ta-da, the whole position is sealed. So now he just needs to find a square for the king. Lo and behold, there it is. And the devilish trap is set. And I was this close to fall into uh, that trap and become the 9,000th 9, victim of uh, Eric Rosen's devilish stalemate traps. Luckily, I managed to dodge the bullet in the last moment by the check and eventually stirred, away, stirred the game away from the stalemate and uh, convert my winning position. But boy... Like this level of creativity definitely deserves uh, some kind of credit and appreciation, even if it doesn't quite work out in the end in the game. So that was us for today, guys. Don't forget to uh, press the like button, press the subscribe button, comment if you like. And also note that I do have somewhere here um, a donate button if you like the content that I'm putting out there on YouTube. Um, I also appreciate donations. I received a couple of them recently. So shout out to the lovely people who are supporting my channel that way. Thank you very much. Um, and on that note, we are going to move on now. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.